And yeah, we're live. Go ahead. Okay, so hello everybody. Uh, welcome to the webinar. We are from Turkey. We're hot Turkey. We are um, Yashizanlar. Uh, right now with me, I have next to me Ezgi, our operations manager, and our outreach assistant Gülşah. Hello. Hello. So uh, we go through the presentation. We'll talk about our activities in Turkey since we founded uh, since last summer, and uh, we both have we all have uh, parts in the presentation. And after that, uh, if you have any specific <coughs> questions, uh, we will be happy to answer about ourselves, about our operations, about anything. So again, welcome everybody. We're starting now. Hello everyone. As Jan introduced, Hello. I'm in here. Thank you very much for participating. We are happy to be sharing the situation in Turkey. What is the artisanal? What are we doing? I'm going to give you a general insight about the context and what we are doing and how we were established and what are the next plans. And I will just give information very briefly. And as John mentioned at the end of the presentation, I'll be happy to answer the questions if you have, if you want to learn more about this. So you see right now Turkey's map, map of Turkey. As you know, Turkey has a very specific position in the world, which is a country. Turkey is a country between Europe between Asia, North Africa, and Middle East, so which makes it quite unique uh, in, our, in its position. So it has been always been on migra migration routes, and it is, because of its nature, it is very multicultural. For centuries, it has always been attracting so many immigrants from all around the world, basically. And as you are aware, Turkey is also has border has a big border, as you can see, with Syria. And since the conflict began in Syria a few years ago, the number of refugees from Syria keeps increasing. I will turn back to the refugee issue, but there is another specific thing about Turkey. Turkey is also an earthquake zone, and it has a big fault line, which is called North Anatolian Fault Line. And for many years, there has been always big earthquakes in the starting from the east side of Turkey, and it's always going to the west side of Turkey. And the last big earthquake happened in 1999, very close to Istanbul, which caused thousands, tens of thousands of casualties. And it had been a very big chaotic thing for Turkey, which had a lot of years to recover from this event. And anytime there is another earthquake is, is expected in Turkey, which will have a great magnitude and there are preparations about it. Government is preparing disaster preparedness plan, but that's quite problematic. We'll come to that point later. And also that the expected earthquake is just uh, the gap in the North Anatolian fault is just below, just south of Istanbul going to the Marmara Sea. So, we're talking about the population of roughly 20 millions to be affected from that earthquake. So that's also another con uh, another concern for Turkey right now. And also, I want to mention, I want to give more information about Istanbul right now. Let's go back to the previous map. So Istanbul is, Istanbul has the population of 17 million people, which is one of the most populated cities in the world. And it is really dense. It's a, it is the densest city of Turkey. It is also a multicultural economical hub. So this is a very beautiful city as well as being extremely chaotic in many ways. So since the influx began from Syria, you can see the numbers in here, the official numbers by UN, given by UNHCR. Turkey is hosting 3.7 million refugees. And 3.3 million of the, this number is Syrians, which is a great number because Turkey's population is almost 80 million. And the number of refugees is dis distributed in many cities. The biggest number of refugees is in Istanbul, but compared to the population in Istanbul, the percentage is lower than the 
cities which are borders with Syria. So this is the general situation. If you need more details about the thing about the context, I will be happy to answer these questions later. So this is our team. I would like to show you as Yarchizanlar. You can see here. This is Muhammad. He is our community outreach assistant. He is Syrian, and he helps us. He helps us uh, reaching out the Syrians to cooperate with us, to be volunteers in our project, and to be a part of our mapping process. And as a refugee himself, he understands the situation way better than us. So he is always navigating us in means of how to approach the refugee community. This is Gusha. Uh, you saw her. She is here. She's going to also tell you about her work in Istanbul. She's our university outreach. And she is helping us mostly in remote mapping and digitizing Istanbul. Oh, I just passed. This is William. He recently joined our team. He is the project coordinator. And this is me, operations and finance manager. And this is John. He is our account manager. This is the Artisanler team. We are quite a small team right now. So I would like to come to the point how we were established. In fact, we would like to, we wanted to show you this photo because this photo is very important for us. We all met, most of the team met in this first missing maps mapathon of Istanbul, which happened in June 2017. That time I was working for another organization and John was an academician and Yushah was a master student who just joined the mapathon to learn more about to go, to learn more about her thesis basically and we all met there that's why this is a very specific event for us and that was the time the hot was just in the process of establishing its operations in turkey and uh, hot was looking for a way to operate in turkey and then since it is quite hard in turkey uh, coming to the context i will mention it soon it is quite hard to operate as an ingo in turkey right now uh, the most effective way was to be established as a Turkish association, local association, and that's how Yarchizanlar was born. Yarchizanlar was established in July 17 by seven founding members, and Yarchizanlar started to operate officially, officially in at the end of September because we got our first official funding at the end of September. So since then. What we are doing and what Yarchizanlar was aiming, as we mentioned, uh, there is a big problem in Istanbul right now in means of refugees. This, is, this has been already a chaotic city because of the population, because of the density. But after the uh, refugee influx, influx began, government had really hard times to handle this huge amount of refugees and providing health services, providing education. It was it became really problematic and there was also the language barrier. So the services couldn't meet the needs of this high number of refugees. And that's why uh, so many INGOs and so many NGOs, hundreds of them, uh, started to work in Istanbul and also mainly the southeastern side of Turkey because of the border to be able to meet the needs of refugees. But uh, what, what were the challenges and still what are the challenges? This high number of refugees, it is very hard to meet their needs and there are, uh, there are no services available in Arabic in Turkey. First of all, this is the biggest problem. Like even uh, they, go, they can go to hospitals, they can have health services, they can go to schools. In fact, they have the right to access the basic needs and basic services uh, provided by the government. In fact, Turkey is a good example as a country who is trying to meet the needs of refugees. However, this is quite impossible because of the language barrier, because it takes time for people to adapt to each other's language. And another thing is fast changing information. Istanbul has the nature of information is changing really fast. NGOs are opening, NGOs are closing, and government is changing its regulations to meet the needs of uh, refugees. Uh, first of all, they, did, they weren't given the position of refugee, they were given the position of guests, we call them guests officially in Turkey, we don't call them refugees because 
Turkey was in the beginning hoping that they are just guests. We don't give them the refugee title because they are going to turn back to their country after the war finishes, which will not be the case. Right now, Turkey is being aware of this, and that's why they are trying to integrate the societies more and more. Because even if it is hoped that uh, maybe after the conflict, maybe after the conflict finishes, people can turn back to their homes, but the number will be so low compared to the big amount of uh, Syrians in Turkey. So integration is a big issue because these people go to school together, these people uh, go to hospitals to get services, but there is always a lack of communication. They can't communicate and the culture is quite different too. These are the main challenges. Also, uh, government wants to take control of the services provided to refugees, or all refugees, not only Syrians, but also the other uh, refugees. But as I mentioned, it is quite impossible. So uh, government is putting a lot of pressure on NGOs and INGOs to see their operations. They don't want anyone to do anything without their uh, without their knowledge, which is causing a lot of problems too, because you can't move that fast. You need permission for every step you take as an NGO, which really slows down the process, and we face a lot of problems because of this issue too. And these are the yeah, these are the challenges we are facing, general challenges, but we can turn it to advantage because each time as I was working for an NGO, another NGO before too. We always faced in coordination meetings when we talked to other service providers. No one is aware of what's going on. Information is changing so fast. You can't catch the changing regulations. You can't catch the changing services provided. So everyone is talking about how will we catch up with the information? How will we catch up with the information? Even the biggest organizations as well as the government. So we could turn it to an advantage. That's why Yartizanlar aim to start this project, which is called BINA. It is building Istanbul's needs and assistance. And BINA, needs, uh, BINA means building in Turkish. So you know the project crowdsourcing non-camp refugee data through OpenStreetMap, which is happening right now in Turkey and Uganda. Jan is going to give more detailed information about it, what we are doing in means of that. But generally, we want to improve the base map in Istanbul, because OSM was really poor in Istanbul, OSM data, because People are not really aware what is OSM. We still have difficulties in explaining OSM to people. We make long presentations, we tell them what we are doing, but in the end, at the end of a, an hour presentation, they still come to us and ask, why don't you use Google Maps, for example? And we need to start from the beginning. And base map improvement is very important because it can be also used for disaster preparedness maps later uh, that we are gonna explain later again and we also want to support partners to conduct mapping and develop a service delivery database and also in arabic language which is very important we are uh, making these maps in arabic and turkish mainly and then english and then support tools and services that facilitate service provision to communities and feedback to providers so we want both NGOs and government uh, organ governmental organizations to be aware of what each other is doing, what the change in information is. We want to use this OpenStreetMap tool as an important OpenStreetMap tools as an opportunity to for everyone to see what they are doing and update their own information on the maps and as well as distributing. So this is the general situation. Uh, how BINA project started. So they will give you more detailed information about these specific issues right now. Thank you for listening. Now John will explain you more. Yeah, okay. Um, well, the context is now it has two legs, it has two branches, uh, the, 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 the project and the Turkish branches, uh, the BINA project. So it has a different context than uh, Uganda, for example, because this is a very dense, Istanbul is a very dense and big urban uh, or urban region, urban setting. Uh, people already have access to technology, people already have access to certain services. So 
yeah, we, we, are, we need to convince them uh, to use OpenStreetMap. We, use to, we, we need to convince them very hard on why OpenStreetMap is useful for their operation, why OpenStreetMap is useful for them to access certain services, etc. while there are other alternatives that already provide some certain level of data. So yes, this is one of the main uh, differences on context, differences on operations here in Turkey. Uh, we are generally getting in close contact and close communication. We try to get in close communication with the refugee population, refugee community, uh, because uh, instead of um, treating people, instead, in, instead of treating the refugee population as people in need, um, the aim is to make the people, make the refugee community as part of the process. Uh, this is very important. Uh, th this is a very important aspect on integration in, in social integration as well. So uh, when we organize our mapathons, when we organize our field data collection, uh, we are all always relying on, we are always trying to get in touch with the local refugee community there to because they're all some of some of them are already aware of their surroundings some of them are already familiar with the services there's uh, the, the region that they live in so it's also an opportunity to uh, include them in the process when we are uh, preparing those service maps we are pro preparing we're improving the base map uh, to be to be to be used uh, to, to be shared with the refugee uh, population and to provide services for the refugee population. So involvement of the refugee population, involvement within the refugee population is one very important aspect that we are looking forward to uh, also in our future activities as well. So after the establishment, after official recognition uh, of Yachi Zannar, uh, our, one, of our, one of our first activities was to have a mapathon and a training to, refi to, to the refugee community. It's an SPI, small project Istanbul. It's a community center in Fatih, in Fatih district uh, in central Istanbul. Uh, it, it is frequented by uh, Syrian refugees. It's working with Syrian communities. So we organize a training there. And after the training, uh, the attendees, the volunteers there uh, have produced that map, how to access the community center from the main tram and bus stations. So this, is, this was one of the product, this was one of the uh, first products that Yachi Zanna achieved uh, working with refugee community. And then we organized, uh, again, a, a mapathon with the attendance of the Syrian refugees from the attendance from the Syrian community uh, in Adar. It's also another community center that's uh, helping that's working with Syrian with, with the Syrian population and one of one of, one of the as one of the important thing of that mapathon for example the people you see in the picture most of the people you see in the picture they also uh, were our volunteers in the field as well so uh, they uh, participated in remote mapping of the region they participated in digitizing the buildings and road networks of that region and afterwards uh, they also got into the field with us and collected data, collected POI information, service points information uh, for the Fatih region in Istanbul. Uh, you can see the results of the Adar Mapathon that day on the, 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 the building digitized that day. Uh, that uh, Mapathon is included in a different region, Küçükçekmece, but the attendees of the uh, Mapathon were all also participated in our field mapping activities. <laughs> And also we are partnering with, as you, most of you all are aware that there's a missing maps project going on uh, in part, in, with partnership with Doctors Without Borders as well. So we also get in touch, we also get in communication with the, the Doctors Without Borders in Turkey. Uh, it was also, as you mentioned, it was the first, the very first uh, activity, even before the application and registration of uh, Yerçi Zanlar, the first activity that had uh, did with uh, did in Turkey was the missing maps mapathon with MSFs, and we continued that. There were numerous uh, mapathons uh, almost every month going on with uh, Doctors Without Borders. This was in August. Uh, as you can see, some statistics about that event. 
Uh, we also did in November, in the World GIS Day, we went to Ankara and we also met the volunteers and we also met the followers of uh, Doctors Without Borders Turkey in Ankara as well. Um, it was very different for us. It was very uh, exciting for us because it's the first event, first activity that we uh, had participated outside of Istanbul. And uh, among those numerous, the, the latest mapathon that we organized, Missing Maps Mapathon, we organized with uh, Doctors Without Borders was just this weekend in our office right here. Uh, it was very good. We made, we, we meet very nice people. We made good friends from other NGOs as well. And everybody, as we see that everybody has a positive attitude and everybody is uh, excited about uh, these events and excited about participating. So we are following up with them as well also to use OpenStreetMap and our map products in their operations as well. So again, this is, these are some of the pictures from our uh, Mapathon uh, during the uh, presentations and afterwards there was the uh, team photo. And this is the activity, I'm sorry. Uh, sorry, I would like something. to mention something else about these Mapathons. We talk a lot about these Mapathons. We show you examples, but they are really special for us because uh, you know, Yerçizanler is not known in Turkey as well as HOT, and it would be very hard for us to reach out other NGOs to be taken serious by other NGOs if we wouldn't have the help of MSF. Really, like, we are really thankful to them because in those events, we meet so many people from other big NGOs because of uh, their volunteer and their volunteers and supporters because they have been operating in Turkey for a long time and you know like uh, they are quite well known and right now when we say Yerçizanlar sometimes we have the reaction of uh, what is Yerçizanlar from other NGOs and other governmental organizations so this is a great opportunity for us like in these mapathons we meet a lot of people and we make a lot of connections with organizations like Greenpeace, Turkish Red Crescent, IBC which would be quite hard uh, without those mapathons I would say. I just wanted to mention that. Okay, thank you. And this is now the last, as you can see in the screen, this is the last activity. This is the heat map of our last mapathon. So uh, we are uh, planning to contribute, planning to continue our contribution and collaboration with Doctors Without Borders uh, a lot. And we are again um, planning to organize at least one Missing Maps Mapathon together per month. Uh, we also have other connections, just not, not just uh, the other NGOs, we also have the connections, we also have uh, contacts, work, works, activities within the universities as well. And I'm heading the presentation, I'm changing the angle of the camera towards Gülşah. <laughs> Hi. And she will talk about our activities and partnerships within the universities in yeah. Turkey. Yeah, uh, university outreach process mainly um, focused on remote mapping and uh, university students cont contribute to complete the base map uh, for field mapping, which is uh, completed by uh, Syrian refugees and uh, locals. Uh, we had mapathons training and lectures in uh, well-known universities, Istanbul Technical University and Mimar Sinan Fine Art University. And they, uh, we organized mapathons with uh, different clubs, geometrics clubs and the volunteering club and urbanism club, as well as Mimar Sinan. And the feedbacks were uh, really good and amazing. They were really interested in, but uh, there are some challenges I want to mention about. Uh, for example, uh, here is the main challenge is volunteering awareness and um, uh, humanitarian aid concepts are not uh, adopted in Turkey. Uh, so uh, people, um, so the political context also is really different and the integration problems and community conflicts are a big problem. And uh, there is a gap between the newcomers and the uh, host community. So uh, in uh, specifically in Binar project, um, Specifically in Binar project, Istanbul is a huge city and also cosmopolitan city. And uh, vulnerable groups um, are living outside of the city mostly. So um, this fact is not being face to face every time. So there is no um, urge to uh, soli uh, urge for solidarity. So this means that uh, no one is directly face to face this fact. And uh, as a result, uh, it is not perceived as disaster. 
um, that's why it's a long-term process to create a uh, community to help each other and uh, make integration uh, effectively. Uh, but at the same time, creating awareness uh, about humanitarian crisis, uh, crisis uh, with trainings and um, seminars and mapathon and teaching students OSM tools uh, they could use to help vulnerable groups and develop the sense of solidarity. We supported mapathons with gamification and connections inside and between universities. Uh, another point is the success of these mapathon bonds, uh, the professional interest of students. So uh, instead of helping refugees directly, uh, they saw they could help the refugees um, in the area of their interests. Uh, in the beginning, university students perceived the newcomers as strangers, and uh, this is the gap what I um, I mentioned before, and then. Uh, the, this uh, university outreach can break the ice between newcomers and the uh, host community students uh, in the context of this political situation. And also this is making uh, the gap smaller because uh, they spend energy and time and uh, we encourage the empathy. So uh, it is uh, a huge step for integration, I guess. And uh, between uh, communities, uh, they could understand how to be coexist. And uh, this is a step for communication. Finally, uh, we are establishing uh, the new youth mapper chapter. This will be the first youth mapper chapter in Turkey. And uh, this will be open for everyone in IT, Istanbul Technical University. And uh, we are establishing it with, with really highly motivated groups. And uh, it will be interdisciplinary and collaborative. Uh, so I want to say that uh, it is hard to ex uh, expect uh, short-term results in this university outreach, but um, it provides communication, integration and awareness, as well as mapping. And we, we started to see uh, the results, really positive and uh, beautiful results recently. So, um, yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it was a sudden finish, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so continuing on, we we have uh, different focuses on uh, in, in in approach to the community. We have connections with the universities. We have connections within local NGOs. Mostly, we have connections through those local NGOs to um, the refugee community themselves, and also we are reaching. We are trying to reach out the local community, local Turkish community here as well to. Uh, make participation together participation possible and in our efforts we also have support from from in, uh, from internationally and also youth mappers youth mappers have provided us uh help in our remote mapping activities there were interns in our uh, projects that are interns working with us uh through youth mappers um teach osm and salesforce have contributed to our remote mapping activities a lot and we also want to thank them so we are also uh expecting we are also uh, want to see other participants other than these groups as well in our uh, coming projects coming activities uh and we will th thank you a lot for that again uh, I will have uh, within the context. So this shows the context in Istanbul. The 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 population the, the population of Syrian refugees, the population of Syrian per percentage of Syrian refugees by population in Istanbul, and um, in our project when we are prioritizing, when we are de de deciding on where to map, uh, we, when we are deciding on our remote mapping activities and also our field mapping activities. Uh, the percentage of the population and accessibility logistics uh, both of them were main main parameters that uh, we decided when prioritizing the tasks and as you can see uh, mostly in the western part of istanbul in the european part of istanbul uh, the population of refugees syrian refugees are very high in percentage uh, compared to the local uh, population and we started with Fatih in our efforts because it is one of the highest uh, population of refugees living inside and also it's in the heart of the city very central part of the city uh, we also had organized field mapping uh, activities in Sultan Bayli. you can see in the eastern most easternmost side of the map uh, it's also has the highest 
percentage of refugees in Anatolian side of Istanbul. And after that, we are going on the field into Zeytinburnu and Bajla, just next to a little bit west of Fatih in the map, as you can see. And we are prioritized and we, we want to uh, extend our efforts to other districts, other parts of Istanbul as well. So in Tasking Manager, we had, we organized, uh, we opened seven uh, projects, seven activities, and we, and also if we count Fatih, it's not uh, now shown on, on this, on this map. Uh, with the Fatih, we worked on uh, seven, sorry, eight different districts of Istanbul. So after our mapping, since uh, start of our operations in August in 2007, uh, there have been more than 160,000 uh, buildings digitized, digitized uh, by the volunteers, by the by the by the OSM community. And as you can see, the number of buildings in each district and the level of completeness in the tasks, the level of completeness in uh, the remote mapping and tasking manager, you can see. Uh, almost all, all the buildings in Fatih, Imrani and Sultanbeyli districts are digitized. Almost all the buildings in Bajilar and Beyoğlu districts are digitized. We are almost done in Sanjaktepe district, again in Anatolian side. And we are also still working on Küçükçekmece and Zeytinburnu. And Bajilar and Zeytinburnu, you can see in the western part of the map. Uh, right now we are on the field collecting also service point data for those regions as well. Well, we completed, I mean, those buildings were digitized, completed, but uh, there's still a huge amount of validation needed, as you can see um, uh, from the screenshot on the, on, on, on the screen. Uh, there were lots of errors, there were, there were lots of geometrical errors, so one of our tasks is also to go through all of those edits, all of these uh, contributions, and uh, first, well, first validate the data geometrically, then go to the field and validate the data and also add the service points uh, within the field. So talking about field data collection, we went to field uh, with our volunteers uh, in Fatih and Sultan Beyli. A total number of 25 volunteers contributed to those uh, field mapping efforts, all of them within the refugee community and we collected uh, more than 10,000 uh, service point, lo service location, service points information for Fatih district, for central Istanbul, and uh, about 3,000, uh, more, a little bit more than 3,000 service points for Sultan Beyli. Uh, you may see the difference, you may see the difference in numbers. It's not because it's not incomplete. The field work, field data collection for both these regions are complete, but Fatih is in the central part of Istanbul. Sultan Bey is a little bit outside the city center, so the number of service points are lower uh, in that region. That's why the difference. And right now in Bajlar and Zeytinburnu, uh, another 15 volunteers within the refugee community are helping us collect service point information for that district, going street by street, uh, and within one or two months, we will be able to share, validate, and upload that data to OpenStreetMap as well. So this summarizes the regions that we're working, that we have worked with in the field of, with uh, 40 volunteers from the refugee community in all, all those districts. And there's also, we are, uh, after the data collection, there's again, quality assurance and validation. There will be validation efforts uh, we are monitoring the changes. It's, it's again a little bit gamification inside to give some boost within the group, within the voluntary group, uh, just a, at a little competition between, between them. So every day they're collecting data, every day they're uploading their forms, ODK forms, and we are just uh, validating and counting the number of edits, number of buildings, number of validated data, so that uh, they have little competition going on between them. Uh, also, we are going to use using uh, going by change by change set by change set through OSM chart, for example. Again, we have those uh, validation of uploads, validation of the change sets going on in those regions where we go to the field and also where we may perform the remote mapping activities. So this was 
uh, a render of Fatih, not directly from OpenStreetMap, but it shows if you look at the buildings, building data, uh, it's not populated. It's the, it's the Fatih region, it's showing the Fatih district of Istanbul. And you can see uh, we went to the field after those remote mapping and field mapping activities. We completed, we digitized all the buildings, we updated the road network there, and we added more than 10,000 service point locations in the map, which now when you open, when you log on, uh, when you open openstreetmap.org, looks like that. So uh, our aim is to go on doing that, finish all the districts of Istanbul, and also uh, extend our operations to maybe other cities where the refugee population, where the Syrian refugee population are living in, uh, to also help other communities as well. Uh, for that, we are depending on continuing funding, of course. So we are making our applications. We, are, um, we have applied for the extension of that current project. Uh, we have applied for a project uh, for, with uh, Ithaca and Institute from Italy, uh, EU project for uh, earthquake awareness for earth, earthquake awareness studies, earthquake awareness activities. Uh, we are also have in mind to also uh, include the disabled disab disab community with the disabilities in our projects. Uh, so we are. Uh, wanting planning to extend our operations through extended funding if anybody watching this webinar is able who is able to provide some funds support our projects or if you can direct us with, with it's it's much appreciated so you can follow us in the social media uh it's yachizanna in instagram in twitter and on facebook uh we are updating uh, we are sharing our activities we are sharing our sometimes uh, daily activities as well so you can get in touch with us through those channels you can uh, be informed about our activities on, on on both on the field and both in tasking manager um, if you have any specific questions also later on you can get in touch with us through info at yachizanlab.org uh, it's our uh, it's, the, it's our associations it's our offices uh, email address uh, you can get in touch with us through that and i want to thank you all uh, for listening to us for attending this webinar right now if you have any specific questions anything that we may missed anything that we may skipped to touch anything that you are curious about we are ha here happy to answer you uh, John. Hello. Hello. Thank you for um, the, the content on, on your operations. Um, could you show us a bit more on what, what, what I find are, are some of the interesting outputs? It's not per se, say, um, uh -huh. operation, but the ways that this data uh, would do an outreach um, based on this data and helping refugees navigate bureaucratic processes in Turkey and finding access yeah. to healthcare and those type of things. Could yes. you share a bit about that? Yes, sure. Uh, just a moment. I will stop sharing right now. I will be back with you in a second. While I'm accessing those documents, if you have any other questions, uh, we can answer that. Hey, Dan. Um, Amelia here. I think there's a few questions that people have written in the group chat. Um, so I'll just read a few of them out. So. Uh, one from Sarah, um, and she said, are you working strictly with Arabic-speaking refugees or all different refugee groups? Uh, okay, so right now, uh, within the context of our current project, we are working with Syrian and Arabic-speaking refu refugees, but uh, we may, uh, we, we, we also want to extend our focus 
for example, in Zeytinburn region, that the region that we are in the field right now, also in Fatih region, there are other refugees as well. There's a huge refugee population also from Africa too. So uh, once we finish the base maps, uh, we are planning to, we, we really want to also extend our focus and uh, not just uh, Arabic speaking refugees, but other refugees as well. Yes. Great. And then Janet has written, um, have you been using Map Campaigner? And I guess if the answer to that is no, then um, is there a particular tool that you've been using for managing the fill data collection? Um, we, 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 we are not using, we didn't use in the previous two fieldworks the uh, map, uh, map campaigner. Uh, what we are doing is we are designing the ODK forms and uh, the refugees uh, and the, the field volunteers are uploading their data sets, uploading their forms uh, through uh, folders on Google Drive. Uh, we check, we validate there. Uh, we validate their data from there and give feedback and ask, the, ask them to upload the data. So this is right now what we are uh, doing in the operations. Uh, but we are uh, in also trying to uh, look at different approaches in the field uh, data collection. So uh, it's a changing and evolving process right now. So what right now is to add a little bit of follow-up, day-to-day follow-up and gamification. Uh, we, are, we have chosen that way. Actually, Mohammed Najjar was using that. Uh, mm -hmm. But as it's still being developed, uh, we are also ironing out some bugs and um, setting up the data model and um, proper visualization. So um, still a work in progress. Okay, to uh, and answer Paul's question, yes, uh, in, in the rush it may be yet a little bit uh, lost. So we also drafted, we also drafted uh, map products and uh, brochures to uh, hand out in the community centers to the refugee population as well. So we also uh, asked UNHCR's feedback on that, how to use their information, how to attribute their information. So. Uh, this information is uh, this this brochure this, this brochure design is saying how uh, refugee po uh, populations how Syrian refugees specifically can access uh, health uh, services for example it is in both Turkish English and Arabic and it uh, in in the inside of it we are also providing uh, the health services within a district within the district so that they can uh, see their names, they can uh, see their locations. And also we have provided links to download data uh, through Maps.me uh, so that they can have the offline data in their mobile phones if they're not able to use data connections, for example, or if they don't have, uh, they, they, they don't have internet package or that they don't have access to the internet, they can use it offline in their mobile phones. So uh, we are providing, we are directing uh, access to that data uh, through that, through the community centers. Uh, also, uh, this is, the, the previous one was a brochure of the same design. This would be a map uh, that would be hung on a wall, that would be presented in the wall. So we are planning to distribute those, also access to legal services, also registering a newborn baby, for example, so these type of information we are going to highlight on those maps, highlight on the map products and uh, try to reach uh, refugee communities uh, through them, hopefully. Also, there was another question I saw. I will just look on it. Okay, stop screen sharing. Sorry about that. Yep. about the disability or? What are you seeing as the primary benefits use cases of the data now and over the next six, 12 months? Who is currently using, who will be using and how? Okay, so uh, it's a question from Tyler. Uh, the primary benefits and use cases of the data products as right now, uh, mainly focused on the refugee population. So. 
uh, through the community centers, through uh, the, our outreach efforts. Uh, we are planning to get in directly with, in touch with the refugees to use, try to help them use that data, help them use the information in their uh, daily day, day to day lives. And over the next six, 12 months, when you say in the long term, I also uh, may have mentioned a little bit about in the previous question. It's not just uh, refugee. We are trying to populate the OpenStreetMap data, a detailed and up to date data of Istanbul to be used by uh, anybody. It may be a refugee community, it may be a dis community with disabilities, it may be a different group, different purposes, it may be even for uh, commercial purposes. So uh, we are trying to, uh, in the long term, uh, make this data to be accessed by more and more people, more and more people. We want to be more and more, more people be aware of OpenStreetMap and the capabilities of OpenStreetMap. Uh, so you can add something. Uh, I would like to say something too. Before, uh, as I said, there is a very information is changing really rapidly in Istanbul and it is really hard for refugees for the host community and the service providers to uh, keep up with this change in information. Before, in fact, we noticed that uh, this community is mainly using Facebook groups or WhatsApp groups within their community center or within their neighborhood to be able to inform each other about the change in information, the services provided for them. We also try to create the awareness among the refugee community to use OpenStreetMap so that they can see the services available for them, which is also in Arabic language. This is a great advantage for them because none of the uh, none of the maps are in Arabic right now. NGOs are trying to create their own maps, but it is always getting uh, it is always getting lost because this is their map and it is not uh, made in a shared platform because many of them are not aware of OpenStreetMap too. That's why we also, as well as reaching out the reaching out the refugee community, we also have a lot of meetings with NGOs and we just started to provide trainings for NGOs too so that they can at least have the knowledge of OpenStreetMap and they can be aware of a platform so that they can introduce it to their service providers too. Not only for them to be able to make edits on it, but also for people to use. Okay, here is the map and you can see the services available for you, which is also in Arabic language. This is a big thing because only in Sultan Beyli and Fatih, uh, right now tens of thousands of people are able to reach these maps because the number of refugees is really high like it may look like only two districts but in fact those two districts hold tens of thousands of refugees which is a great use for them and it has never been done before in turkey so it is also our aim to make people aware of yeah there is something like that so we can use it this also answers uh, another question i saw below what was that uh, no about like Oh yeah, no, this, this is that question in fact, like, okay, in the next time. So our aim is more and more people will be aware of this OpenStreetMap platform and then they will be able to use it. We always tell NGOs like, we just can't update the information all the time. We are only five people right now and we sort of have staff shortage. Of course, we would like to, if we have the chance to get more funding and uh, increase the number of the people in our team maybe we can still do better do more but it will be still hard istanbul is a huge city so we have to have more people to be contributing to this mapping of istanbul and in fact our main efforts was focused on this thing like making people aware making ngos and refugees aware of this service that's why we recently started to produce maps we spent a lot of time in collecting the data I just wanted to mention this. Okay. Um, one of the questions that Amelia is asking, can you tell us a bit more about the potential for the disability project? Um, so right now, uh, there's a very good uh, system on wheel map going, uh, showing access to uh, ac the, the disabled access to services. Uh, we may uh, try to contribute to that. We may try to get in touch with the local NGOs, local and local uh, government working with people with disabilities, so that we can 
populate the data, populate the, populate Istanbul's data, uh, and collect information about this disability access, so that, for example, on a similar system with wheel map or even in wheel map. Uh, the, the, the disabled people, uh, the people with disabilities, would have access uh, to that information. Right now, it's very um, fractured. It's not. It's very incomplete. So uh, we want to have. We want in our minds to make it a more reliable data set for uh, for use to be used by the uh, people with disabilities. Um, was I was I able to answer the question, Emilio, or did you have yeah. any specific? Okay. No, that was great. Um, I was just curious about whether there you'd noticed that there was a particular um, I don't know community of disabled people within Istanbul who were needing that information. But it seems like there there is there are, NGOs and projects set up for it. There are, and we are we are looking we are looking for uh, possible collaborations in in that area as well because I think it will be a very good and useful data to provide uh, people here uh, because it's 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 a very large city it's a very dense city uh, you you may think that uh, in a setting like that there will be lots of places that are offering that are providing disabled access but it is in that chaos and in that density of the information, it's very hard to uh, access to that information. So we may try to facilitate uh, an easier way and a more accessible way to uh, access this information. So yeah, we are looking for possibilities on that. And uh, there's another question like, how do you fund your activities? Right now we are funded uh, in contract with Humanity and OpenStreetMap as the Achizanner in the uh, crowdsourcing non camp refugee data in OpenStreetMap project, which has part Turkey and part Uganda. And our, may, our funding right now, our source of funding right now is that project, but we are uh, looking other ways, we are looking for other opportunities to extend that. Uh, to be able to be funded from other projects, other studies as well. So we have some ideas, but we are all they're all in the proposal stage. So right now we're only funded uh, through one project. Another question. Have you looking out for any existing? Geoffrey asked any existing open data sets like a building footprint of Istanbul or a roads layer that you can import in the OpenStreetMap. Um, we have tried before, I have tried before unofficially uh, through local government, etc. Before I was part of Yachizanna, before I was uh, part of HUT, uh, while I was in university. Uh, there are not much open data sets readily available to just import into all the municipalities they say that they're providing that information it's open but you are open to access the data but once you say that you're downloading the data you are using the data you are migrating the data to open street map um, the situation may change uh, but we are uh, we will look in the, into those possibilities as well in the future Yeah. And uh, regarding the funding also, now um, we are applying to, and in addition to the funding part, we, are, we have applied for PRM, the US State Department uh, calls on uh, refugees, uh, refugee, act refugee studies, refugee activities in Turkey. So uh, our main uh, Right now, our main proposal is uh, on that way. We have started, we have uh, gained speed on the project. Now we have remotely mapped eight districts. We have field mapping, we field, we field map, we, we got on the field to four districts in Istanbul. And our plan is to, as I mentioned, uh, to finish Istanbul and in the meantime, uh, provide data collection, provide data, provide uh, perform activities, actions in other cities that have ref refugee population as well. So uh, we have applied for sort of extension with a very, very, in a very similar scope. 
to the what to what we are doing right now to PRM and State Department, and it will be our uh, main funding source if it goes through. Uh, I want to add that. Any other questions in the chat? No. If if you have any other questions, you can just ask through. Uh, Email, contact us later. No, if you yeah, we still have maybe five no three minutes. So if you have one more question, uh, we can answer that. If that's all the questions, uh, we can wrap up. And you can if you have any further questions, any comments, you can just contact us from our social media accounts or at info at And I'm sure there are things that we forgot to mention. Maybe, yeah, There are probably. so many things going on and this, uh, Istanbul is a chaotic city and we always have so many things going on every day uh, when we go to the field. There are always other things to mention. If you would like to learn more about it, we will be very happy to answer these questions. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot for joining. Thank you for the nice comments too. Oh, there, oh, there uh, is there is one more question. Okay, we will answer that personally. Thanks a lot. Okay, bye bye.